Hi friends, we are back again for another episode of Soaring Through Chaos. And as always, the purpose is to help each other find meaning in our life. These are difficult times and I don't want to pretend like it's all hunky-dory and we can have fun. But through all these challenges, these are the times when we find our souls. These are the times that challenge us to look beyond the simple and ordinary, the financial difficulties, the health challenges, to find meaning in our life. And with me is, is my friend, Ilana Gulan. I got to know her many, many years ago. I think it was 2005, isn't it, Ilana? I think so, yeah. And Ilana and I um, worked together at Cadence Design Systems soon after the acquisition of this amazing company from Israel. And, um, and the, on the first day, I was told that I was going to be working with an F-16 fighter pilot uh, trainer. And I was like, uh-oh, how am I going to work with somebody from the Israeli Air Force? And that's Ilana. And uh, what was amazing was the teamwork. We worked together for about 18, 19 months. I learned, a little, for, I learned a little bit of Hebrew during that time. And uh, I think you probably learned some Hindi. But we were working in the San Francisco Bay Area and we traveled along with our colleagues to more than 15 countries and worked around the globe on uh, electronic design management, if I remember, electronic design verification management. So tell me, Lana, what brought you to Cadence and how life has been since then? Oh my God. I mean, like I'm thinking of my journey and it's been like all over the place. Um, but yeah, so I mean, right after the Air Force, I actually fell in love with uh, technology and I decided that instead of my old dream as a kid to be a doctor, I will actually learn um, electric engineering and um, which is kind of a funny, you know, 180 degrees <laughs> difference. But um, so I studied electric engineering in the Technion, I worked in Intel for a while, and then I actually fell in love with customer facing. And I decided that I want to transition from engineering to, um, to become more customer facing, and that's how I landed um, a role in Vericity, who was uh, an Israeli company that was growing in um, North America. Um, so I joined their team and then we were acquired by Cadence Design, and here we were, and we met you, Shankar. <laughs> and it was such an amazing thing. This was the first time in my life I was working with a mostly Israeli team, at least the Vericity part of it. And yeah. uh, I was amazed at the culture. I had no knowledge. All, all the knowledge I had was anecdotal before that. And before I knew it, I was like, Achi, Ahuti, and I was able to speak uh, at least a little bit, Lachaim, or, you know, Shana And, uh, and uh, it, took me, it took me a year to actually get some Hebrew, but um, I traveled and I learned so much in such a short time. Um, yes. So I really want to thank you. You were a big inspiration for me. Um, I learned so much about how to get things done without giving excuses. You were a no excuse kind of a person in those days. No excuses, but I learned a lot from you too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me more about how life has been since those times. I left in 2007. You continued at Cadence for a while and uh, went through some yeah. uh, family challenges and all. So what has life been since then? And I know you've been doing incredible work lately. So tell us your whole story if you can. Oh my goodness. Um, Whatever you yeah. like to share. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I did stay in Cadence um, a few more years after that. I learned a lot. I kind of leaped to more product management roles and architecture roles, et cetera. Um, eventually I decided that I actually want more startup um, and, and kind of feel the vibe of fast paced startups. And I joined, again, an Israeli company that was um, opening their um, divisions here in the U.S. Um, so they took me to start the um, operation in the U.S. And you kind of from buying the routers and the printers to, you know, five um, um, different sites and multi-million dollar deals. Like it was a really, really interesting experience. I learned a ton um, a lot of successes, a lot of mistakes, you know, that's how you learn. Um, 
And after that, I decided that I want to create something on my own. Um, it has its own dramatic story. Um, if you want, we can talk about that too. Um, certainly, and, certainly. And in fact, <laughs> we all learn from uh, personal stories, you know. Management books are fine, but to be able to hear the story of an entrepreneur and, uh, you know, somebody who's now guiding lots of entrepreneurs is actually more fun, more, more meaningful to me. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm happy to share it. Um, it's kind of a, almost a humiliating story that I was ashamed to admit for a while. But um, so I was in um, kind of running this startup that I was running the operations there. And um, a friend of mine came to me and said, hey, Lana, I want to start a company. What do you say? I want you to be my co-founder. I knew the guy for like 20 years. So uh, we studied together in the Technion, and it looked solid. Um, and I was so excited. Like, I, I gonna, you know, like, I. Uh -huh. I was working on this thing and I was, you know, like it just energized the heck out of me. And um, it was time to raise money. And because we were such a team and we were like so far down the road of the product, um, even that was easy and within just a few weeks, you know, there was like $800,000. Like it was like three times more than we wanted to raise. And it wasn't from one small investors. It was three prominent Silicon Valley investors. And I thought I was living a dream. And so during the goodbye party for my previous job, I told everyone about the startup. And I, you know, I really thought that I was living the dream. Um, and little did I know that it's going to blow in my face. Um, my co-founder decided to take the money and throw me out of the business on exactly the same day. And suddenly within 24 hours, I was left with nothing. So no job, no salary, no investment, no startups. And I think the worst of all, Shankar, is my ego was like crushed. And um, I was like, what do I do now? Like, do I look for a job? Do I start my own business? Do I look for another co-founder? Do I look for revenge? Like what on earth? Like how do I even get up in the morning? And um, that was a really, really tough time. And I think it took me years to be able to even talk about the, um, how devastating it was. So that, that's kind of the reality. And since then I leaped and we can talk about that too. But I mean, you know, it's, it's important to also embrace the hardship and, and the things that can go wrong and how hard it is to wake up in the morning when you don't have the passion you don't know what you want to do and when you're you know you're not sure what's your legacy and what you're made of and what's going to make you motivated and you know it's like it's really hard to get up in the morning in that situation yeah yeah i mean i've been i've been through my fair share of challenges myself in fact uh, the roller, roller coaster ride that many entrepreneurs go through is almost like a manic depressive ride, you know what I mean? And it yeah. takes a lot of um, strength, a lot of resilience. Um, I think there's even a book called The Hypomanic Edge to be able to deal with these ups and downs and continue. We have to have mad confidence to be able to get into it. And Ilana, one of the things I find is that now you're guiding entrepreneurs, you're guiding people through their careers, you're guiding them to go through and face these ups and downs. Would you like yeah. to describe what exactly you do, how you do it, and anything you want to talk about those things? Because I sure. think it's much harder to be able to be with people when they're going through these ups and downs. But it's also amazing. So I think once you go through some of these um, roller coasters, and again, I described only one, but there were many <laughs> throughout life. And I think that when you go through them, um, you realize that was actually was help. You could have gone through this a lot easier, a lot better, a lot happier, a lot faster. You know, you would have spent less money. Like it was just, if I only reached out for help. And again, because of this, like, I'm a badass Air Force woman. I don't need to ask anybody for help. I'll just figure it out on my own. Um, but actually, I it took me a long time. So I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't wake up in the morning. Like it was, I was a mess at home. I wasn't myself. I wasn't in shape. I was gaining weight. Like it was just like, it was not right. Like I should just have reached out to someone. And I think eventually I did figure out it took a while, long while and a lot of mistakes, but eventually I leaped in my career. Um, I did 
um, get a little bit of help and that made a huge difference. Um, and eventually, yeah, I started a company and I sold it and I became, I took the money and I became an investor and I'm invested today in over 80 companies and I'm on board a network venture, um, and a general partner of a network venture, helping Israeli companies grow in North America. And also I write for Forbes and I'm a public speaker and I decided to take all of that and help other executives who are in the same situation, who feel stuck, who feel like they can do so much more and they want to figure out what their passion is and what their career direction is and what they want to do next and really take that and help them leap in their career, whether it's to another role, another function, another industry that will make them happier or to start their own business and walk them through that roller coaster um, as it happens, because honestly, it's a journey and it's not about helping them once or twice and having a meeting here and there. It's really about a journey and how do you help somebody along that really difficult journey to make it much more successful, much faster, you know, and, and make sure that they're, they're happy. So um, that's what I do and I love it. It's the best thing I've ever done. So. And yeah, if there's anybody who I can trust, you were, uh, we were talking earlier about thousands and thousands of people are in transition right now, executives, entrepreneurs, People who have done big things are right now in transition because of uh, the pandemic and the changes that it has brought together. Uh, I mean, I've seen you go through some of these transitions and uh, it gives me great confidence to say, uh, Ilana is one person who can help because she's been through it all. But you know, yeah. this raises another interesting question, Ilana. Uh, a lot of men in particular, because of the way we grow up, will not ask for help. Yeah. Because um, somehow, and you, you correctly pointed out, you were not asking for help because you yeah. were this Air Force military, you know, person who has been through big, big time challenges. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to stoop to asking for help. But a lot of men are trained not to ask for help. Right. In what ways are you able to help them and how do they approach you or how do you find them? Because a lot of people right. will just hide and uh, go through the pain, you know. And it's painful. So, um, so I can say a few things and it's a great question, Shankar, because um, it's definitely, first of all, I'm lucky. So in Career Leap in our program, we do see about 50%, 50%. So it is split between women and men um, executives who are looking for the next thing. Um, I think a lot of them came from word of mouth. So people that I've seen the phenomenal changes in some of these executives were like, oh my God, how did you start a business so fast? Or how did you land this kind of a job so fast? And, you know, and they, you know, came to, to us. But, um, but I think it is about, um, it's different between just asking for help. And I think maybe now I see it a little differently, but it's different between just asking anybody for help and really looking at somebody who is not just talking the talk, but has walked the walk. And there's a big difference between somebody who has been there roughly where you are and roughly where you wanna go and have them take you on this journey versus just somebody that learned how to talk the talk. And that's very, very different. And I think in my head, I always had this thing of, yeah, but it's not going to be someone that can really take me forward. It's going to be somebody that, you know, is kind of talking and asking me, you know, cool questions, but they haven't proved it on themselves. And I think, you know, that's the big difference that I, you know, I wanted to offer the executives in the program is to actually show them that I've been where they are. I've been stuck in engineering and I needed to leap to sales and I was stuck in entrepreneurship and I needed to figure out how to get out of it and start making money and start selling my company or getting leap to in big investor or leaping to public speaking. Like I needed to make those leaps and jumps. And I think once you realize that it's possible and somebody can actually take you there with help, um, it's easier to ask for that kind of help because it's a very specific help. Um, but um, again, like it's, it's mainly about, hey, if this is what you're feeling and you want to be somewhere else, then we're happy to take you there. That's kind of the message. Yeah. Yeah. And Ilana, here's what I found interesting. We haven't talked in years except today before this meeting, uh, but I've been following your work on social media. You ask really good questions. You ask amazing questions. Uh, the question you asked today 
what would you have liked to know as a teen that you didn't know and now you know something like that it was so fascinating so i mean i to me it's beyond just a career it's about life it's yeah. about meaning it's about who am i and what am i doing in my life is that yeah. the kind of thing guidance you provide uh, and Absolutely. how do you what's the process like that's a that's a brilliant question because I think, you know, we define success in different ways. And, and it took me a while to understand that. Like, I think as a teenager, you think success is money or whatever, right? And success can mean different things to different people, right? It can be money, yes, because you need the money or it just gives you confidence or you just want to make, you know, a few million dollars and be super proud of yourself, which is totally awesome. It can be reputation and fame or growth or title or, you know, resp new responsibilities. It could be impact. It could be balance and lifestyle that it has more traveling or more hobbies or more sports or whatever, right? It could be different things. And it could be just a feeling of, I want to feel like I'm doing, making a difference. I want to leave a legacy. I want to live with something with meaningful. And um, I think you need to understand that it's different things and not necessarily every kind of career will, no career will actually give you all four. So there's going to be some compromise and you'll need to figure out that compromise and what's right for you at this stage. And it's going to change in a year or two. And that's what's beautiful about it. Just acknowledging the fact that success means different things for us. And at different times, it's going to, you know, we're going to focus on different things in our career. Um, so first of all, I think it's that, just that acknowledgement that success is different things and you need to adjust your expectations to what you're chasing. And it needs to be realistic because if you're going to tell me that the most important thing is like making, you know, six, seven figure, I was like, right now, I would tell you, don't become an entrepreneur right now because you're going to have a year of trying to figure it out, you know? So you know, you, you need to kind of adjust where you're heading to what your expectations are. Um, I hope that answered the question. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. And it's, uh, I mean, I love uh, talking to people and uh, uh, you're not new. I've known you for so long, but you've, you've grown so much. Uh, in fact, that's one question I have. When I was an entrepreneur and I've been an entrepreneur for more than half my career, I used to do one thing at a time. Uh, it's almost like uh, just focus on one thing. And even as an investor, as an angel investor, I only invested in no more than maybe five companies or so at a time. And here mm -hmm. I see you investing in like 80 <laughs> and also guiding dozens of people. How do you manage? I mean, do you get time? And you have a family, you have two children, uh, teenagers probably, right? Uh, yeah. How do you manage to keep your sanity? How do you manage to juggle this? And that's not my forte. I'm, I like to do a few things at a time. I can't <laughs> be beyond that. Um, I mean, I still do. I mean, I don't, I don't believe in a lot of context switches. I think eventually you need to focus and you need to decide what you're focusing on. Um, the only reason that I can do a lot of the things that I'm doing is because I have a phenomenal team. So um, in the network venture and home run, we have, um, the people who are holding it together are so phenomenal that they can make these things happen. Um, and that's why we can make it, you know, that's why it can happen. And then I can focus on career leap and really helping executives grow. And again, even with career leap, I can't do it on my own. Like I needed to hire phenomenal people to help these executives grow and to help our company grow, um, to really become that next generation of, you know, exclusive program that really takes um, executives forward. Um, so yeah, you know, it's a lot about hiring the right people by your side. And you know, like we were a great team, you know, I think we really complimented each other. I mean, you were my boss, but it was like, I think, you know, like it was just a really good, you know, compliment, you know, we're like complimenting each other. Um, and I think it's about that. It's about finding the people who are can do attitude, who are hungry for more, who want to be part of this. They're not doing it just for the money. They're really like trying to think outside the box, wanting more. They love it. Like it needs to come from the heart um, because that's when it becomes amazing. Um, yeah. So it's, it's about that. And, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to talk like I do with everybody is the challenges we are all facing as a, as a collective. This is probably the most challenging time for humanity as a whole, not at the individual level, but at the collective. We're talking about millions of people 
with the risk of losing life. And uh, tens of millions already have lost job and maybe more, we don't know. Um, aren't, you know startups and big companies from JCPenney to uh, Neiman Marcus and I, I don't know how many companies are scaling back, literally around the world. So yeah. as an entrepreneur, as an investor, as somebody who has guided dozens of people, what do you say? I mean, uh, when people come to you, um, how, where should people, where should people put their energy? A lot of people are depressed. A lot of oh, yeah. people are dejected. And um, I mean, I see that everywhere. Luckily, I'm not working, working, so it's easier for me. But there are a lot of people who need the money or who need right. to be able to support their families. Um, how sh what's the best approach in these trying times? Right. Um, so first of all, you're absolutely right. I mean, the times right now are really, really tough for a lot of families and a lot of individuals. And first of all, I think as a society, we have to bring ourselves together and help whoever needs. Right. So one of the things that I've done is, uh, for example, individuals that just need to land whatever job possible. I'm not talking about major leaps. I'm not made major achievement. Like they just not need the next job that will hire them. Um, so what I did, um, and for example, I partnered with Lyft. So when they um, had to let go of a thousand employees, um, I don't mean drivers, but literally employees of Lyft, um, what we did is um, we gave them for free a five-day kind of training to land the next job. And it, it doesn't really talk about like major leaps. It doesn't talk about what do I want to do next or like big, you know, epiphany, but it really talks about, okay, how do I adjust what my LinkedIn will look like and my resume will look like and how do I pass interviews, right? I mean, there's like specific skills that you need to, that we don't really practice on the day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, all the people need is a little bit of help with um, mindset, with not getting rejected all the time, with, you know, how did they present themselves and just get him to land that job that they need because honestly, some of them are in survival mode and we need to just help them, right? So um, I, you know, I think as society, we need to figure out how can we help this time at this time um, and how we can, you know, kind of impact more people um, with our knowledge and capabilities. Um, so that's one thing that I'm doing very religiously. Um, and by the way, this five day thing is open to anyone who, not, who needs it. So all they need to do is whatever comment on your thing or reach out to me and it's open. Right. Um, the other thing is really, you know, it is a time for some of us that are not urgent with money. Um, actually, this time can actually be a really interesting time to reflect and kind of start thinking, well, life is unpredictable. I, am I doing with it what I want to do? And sometimes the answer is yes. Hell yes. Like I'm doing the best thing that I that I would love to be doing. And I, I can say it that right now, but that wasn't always the case, right? And some people will suddenly sleep at night and will say, you know what, I'm not that happy. And I could be doing something completely different with my life. And if life is, you know, so, you know, unpredictable, maybe I wanna chase my dreams. Maybe this is the time to chase that passion that is in my head. And I've always wanted to create, maybe try to create a business out of it, but I was scared to try, or I had all these ideas in my head and I never had the courage to take that first step. Um, and for those people, we want, the, we want to help them take those first steps in a very clear way of really quick experiments and see if that can work with as limited um, resources as possible or limited um, time as possible and see really quick if this can become your business and can generate money, cannot generate money, can be successful, cannot be successful. So we want to help them really quick assess. And if it's a go, then take them there. Um, so again, it depends on what people need. Um, but that's what's beautiful about it. It's everything is possible. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you. These are difficult times, even offering five days of support. Um, to find the next job or the next gig in these difficult times is a huge thing you're doing. And uh, I'm sure who, those who need help and those who are listening right now will avail of these kinds of opportunities. And uh, 
yeah, I mean, I get people knocking on my door all the time. And uh, do you support people outside the United States too, in other yeah. countries too? Yeah, um, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. So the five day is, um, it's mainly recorded. It's a platform that they can use together with like a Facebook group that they can join. So definitely, you know, it's open to anyone that has internet really and knows and speaks English. <laughs> so, yes, yes, so yes. Criteria. Yeah. I saw one of your webinars that was super effective. I actually went through that to understand the kind of work you're doing. It's, it's really amazing. Um, Thank you, yeah, I'm glad that, uh, yeah, so many transitions. Nobody yeah. would imagine we are going to go through these things. And that's... Yeah, it's not that long, right? It's like a decade, right? And both of us, like, changed yes. completely. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, those who are in high-risk entrepreneurship or in the military or, you know, dealing with emergency medicine are used to this. <laughs> I won't say they're, per it's, they're used to everything, but we are used to the idea of impermanence, unpredictability, chaos, crisis, uh, but not everybody's cut out for this. And right. um, I'm glad that you're there to give some kind of guidance. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about, about um, how to find meaning in life? How do you guide people to find that, you know, for those who have already made enough, for those who have already achieved some of their dreams, there's still that existential void people go through. And I know we all have gone through that, especially when we succeed. <laughs> you know, there's this, um, there's the, the excitement of success, but that's very short lived. Um, right, so always the next piece. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. The next week. Yes. And I can see you five years from now doing different things and same with me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, how, how do you guide them to find that, that something super, you know, something that's subtler than just a career? Right. I know that you, mean, you've done that with people. I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, we do it with a lot of people because honestly I think roughly 60% of the participants in the program actually start when they have no clue what they want to do next um, and it's I think it's pretty typical especially for high achievers the people who have done quite a, a, a bit of things and their skills are already spread on a lot of different topics and theoretically there's a lot of different directions that they can go to and suddenly it's like this realization of but what should I go and what, what will get me motivated and what will get me excited when I wake up in the morning? And um, sometimes just overthinking it um, can actually get you into a state of it's nothing, like nothing excites me anymore. So it's really about, um, and again, it's hard to, uh, you know, it's like half of the, I don't know, like the third of the program is this, but it's really about trying to figure out like, First of all, your must have. So again, what is really, really critical for you? And we talked about some of the things like, um, um, you know, like impact, balance, uh, pay, rep reputation or fame, right? Like what's really critical for you? And we, you, we focus on that first because that's kind of like a compass, like that's gonna help you make decisions, yes or no, like is this a real thing? And then it's really about really drilling into different scenarios and different expertise that you have because I gotta say something you know to all the people who are listening um, you have a very unique combination of expertise skills and values that nobody in the world and I say it again nobody in the world has right so the question is how do you use that and how do you help others with this kind of um, combination right and the more you can find a way to help, whether it's individuals, whether it's companies, what, what is the key value that you bring with that combination? And the minute you really figure that out, that's where you get, that's your zone of genius. That's where you're gonna really shine. So what we do is we really drill into that. And it could be whether you overcome specific obstacles, which is kind of what you're talking about, Shankar, or it could be what are people intrigued by you? What's interesting for you? What are your strengths? What are your skills? What are different experiences that you went in life? And are they taking you to different directions that maybe you didn't even think of? And it's amazing. So we have people in career leap that suddenly, you know, when they went through this exercise and they were tech executives and suddenly they were like, 
but I'm actually passionate about being vegan and making that accessible to everyone. Or um, I actually am passionate about teaching people about learning capabilities and cognitive science. And I mean, suddenly people jumped into things that they didn't even think were there in their heads, but suddenly that was their passion. Um, and I think once you find that, that's when the spark in your eyes, that's when you wake up in the morning super excited, that's when you are the best version of yourself. It's amazing. Yes, indeed. I remember uh, when I first met you, which is uh, 2005, my passion at that time was dance. Yeah, <laughs> that I remember. That even I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and it continues to this day. So I finally said, okay, let me put dance in the right context for people who are doing, who are career oriented. So leadership through dance, leadership through music and understanding, you know, different aspects of their intelligence and all that. So it's phenomenal. Uh, so Ilana, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Um, you have a website and you have uh, your personal uh, social media contacts. What's the easiest yeah. way people can get in touch with you? Yeah, so everything goes um, ilanagolan.com or info at ilanagolan.com is good um, or social media or go to Shankar. <laughs> <laughs> so I will definitely share. Yeah, your... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm still the connector. I like to put people in touch with the remarkable people I've met in my life and you are definitely one of them. And um, I will share some of these links. And uh, again, thanks a lot. Todaraba for joining us and uh, sharing your journey and sharing what you do. And to those who are with us ag again, thank you for joining us. If you wanna know more about Ilana's work, there's I think quite a bit of, uh, yeah, also have a YouTube channel, right? Um, you... No, not to Facebook, not no, maybe, maybe Facebook and, um, I mean, I have website. a link. Facebook and LinkedIn are the main LinkedIn, ones. LinkedIn, Facebook and your website. Okay, fantastic. So again, uh, I learned a lot. Just uh, first, we worked together. By the way, I want to make one small correction. I was not your boss. I was in product marketing, and you were in technical. We we had you our felt like my boss. <laughs> <laughs> but we 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 formed a phenomenal team. That's true, uh, actually, I forgot. Yeah, but it we, felt we like learned, we learned so much from each other that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a great, it was great working together. So That's thanks true. again. And um, to those who are watching, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to directly approach Ilana or me. And uh, we are here to help. We are here to support each other. We are here to support each other from during these challenging times. I love it. Thanks again, Ilana. Bye-bye.